If you guys are looking for a way to heat up your greenhouse without using electricity, then you're at the right place. I've actually built out a couple of different styles of heater using these terracotta pot when you burn a candle inside of it. Now, these are the 72 day burn time candle that I made out of vegetable shortening. And I'll have a link in the video description below so you guys can check that out and see how I make that. And I've said it right, it's 72 days burn time uh, out of one tub of Crisco. Um, and these are the uh, radiant heaters, uh, two different styles that I've built. But today I wanna talk about this new style that I've seen on YouTube. This is another great way to build a radiant heater utilizing sand, a bucket, and a strip of copper. So imagine having these radiant heater work inside your greenhouse and all of a sudden the power goes out. Now you have an emergency source of heat and light that could potentially last up to 72 days depending on your usage. You probably won't need it for 72 days or for it to last that long, but it's nice to know that that is an option. Today, we're gonna build another type of radiant heater using sand and a strip of copper and a bucket. Now, these two type of radiant heaters that I've done before, and I, again, I can link that into uh, the description below and you guys can go check that out, how to make these. These are very simple to make. You just put them together. Uh, this is also very simple. The construction of this radiant sand heater is very simple. It's only consists of four components, uh, which is the pail. Preferably, you want something metal, so you don't want to use anything plastic. A copper strip that I got on Amazon. This is about two inches wide. I'll have the link below in the video description, um, so you guys can uh, easily go ahead and grab that. Sand, and you want to use dry sand. You don't want to use this while it's wet, so you might have to dry out your sand for a couple of days. And then the shortening candle. Now, the only difference I did to this candle is I changed out the wick. Um, the reason why, um, in my previous video that I made, I the, the wick that I used, or the, uh, I just used the uh, regular candles that I cut in half, and I stuck it in here. And what I noticed is that the, uh, the flame on these wick are not that big of a flame because probably because the wick is a little bit smaller. So I went ahead and bought some of these wick right here. These are thicker, uh, longer. You don't need it that long, uh, but I insert it into here and look at the wick it looks a lot bigger. So I think the flame will be even higher. Now the, the burn time is probably going to be less, but I have test these already. A jar of these will continuously burn for six days straight, which still leaves with a bunch of leftover um, shortening around it because it kind of tunnels on, uh, into it. So uh, I'm pretty confident that this will last six days continuously, 24 hours a day for seven days. So um, with this thicker wick, that's gonna produce a bigger flame, which is gonna heat up this strip uh, a lot better. The idea of this type of heater is basically just having sand in here. And when I fill up the base of the sand, I'm going to go ahead and insert this candle right here. And I'll keep it as close to the uh, copper strip as much as possible, still leaving enough air to get in there to uh, have it keep on burning. Um, and then I'll fill up the whole way with sand. That way, when the flame heats up the strip, it heats up the pail, it heats up the sand, and it radiates the heat. And that's a very sufficient way, especially with copper. Copper being one of the most uh, heat conductive type of metal. So you're gonna wanna use copper. And then sand is also one of the very best heat conductor as well. Um, so everything put together is gonna create a, a, a great radiant heater. So I'll start by adding sand into the pail, just a layer for the base for my candle to sit. Once you have the sand about a quarter way down, you're gonna to wanna to take a measurement. And that looks about good. So now I'm gonna fill up the rest with the sand up to the neck and I'll take the cap off. So I don't wanna take the cap off now 
Otherwise, sand will possibly get in it and we don't want that. Okay, so wipe off some of the sand residue on the copper strip and I'll go ahead and remove this cap. So I made a mistake of having the strip too close to the cap where when I try to undo the cap, it won't come off because it was bumping into this uh, copper strip here. So I had to cut it off with the uh, tin snips. So make sure you don't repeat that mistake, but I like to have it as close to the strip as possible. So that's why. But if you don't mind sacrificing your cap, then maybe you could do this way. That way you have it super close to the flame. So now with the uh, cap open, and all I have to do is slide it up with a match. So here we are. Okay, so I have my heat gun here. So let's go ahead and test the strip right now. It's about 60 and the side of the pail. I know the copper strip is hitting the side of the pail right there. So that's about 60 also. And then we'll test the sand. 59, 58-ish. And then I know right there it's already heating up right in the middle there. So. This is kind of crazy, about 15 minutes in, I'm getting a reading of about three, 400. I, my hand's kind of shaky, so it's kind of bouncing all over the place, but uh, 400 at times. Okay, so it's been two hours, and uh, I don't know how this is gonna skew the test, but um, I'm in my garage, and I started this at four o'clock, now it's six, but the garage is not insulated, so, um, when I test, when I turn it on, it was at 54 degrees in here. Now it's at 48. So there's already a, um, almost a six to seven degrees change, uh, drop actually. So, uh, I don't know how that's going to skew the, um, the testing, but you know, uh, I have the temperature gun here, so we'll might as well give it a try. I noticed that, um, this reflective copper strip actually looks like it bounces off from this temperature gun, so I'm not able to get an accurate reading, but I can show you in another way how um, how hot this, this strip is. It is so hot right now, I can't even touch it. Maybe on the side, because it's right by the sand, I can touch it, but right on top, it's burning hot. So um, I can feel it literally right here that these two sides are very warm. This right here is still fairly cold. Test the table real quick. It's 57. Test the side here. It's almost the same on the side of the bucket. 61. And if I test the sand right there, it's like 70 or, yeah, uh, around the jar is about 70. And if I go into the wax, it's at like a hundred something inside the wax. And then on the strip, if I test the strip, you see what I'm saying? It goes back to like 50 something. I don't know if it's because it's reflective or what, but not accurate at all. And I know I have the correct setting on this, on this heat gun. Earlier I was able to get like three, 400. Let's, 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 let's try a different way to test this, um, this copper strip. So let's put a couple of drops of water on here and see how it reacts. There's smoke coming out, it's bubbling. So it's boiling up the water. Ooh, hot. So overall, I think the experiment's gone really well. Uh, whether you choose to build a radiant heater via the terracotta pot or the radiant heater with the sand, uh, they both give off a good amount of heat. Now, I get this question quite a lot because some of my videos actually hit over a million views and every single time I get this question of, this is not gonna heat your room to 70 degrees. Obviously not, um, this is never gonna be able to do that. 
uh, unless you have a multiple of them. And even if you do build multiple of these, it's got to be in a small confined space. Otherwise, a great heater to have in the greenhouse or in the case of an emergency. So if you have this built for the greenhouse and an, an emergency situation hits, you're set, you're good to go. And so that is the benefit for me having all of that. And with that said, cost wise, obviously you're going to want to save money by making the candle last as long as possible. So again, I've made these and tested these and they really do last 72 days, depending on usage, 72 days at eight hours a day with just one tub of Crisco. So check out my other video. Like I said, I link it below in the description. You guys can check that out. And I have handmade these, tested them, and they do last that long. And I wouldn't tell you otherwise. So either way, you're gonna wanna play around with it, test it, and make sure it works for you. And so far, these are probably the best radiant heat style that I've seen. Uh, if you guys have tried it and it didn't work, let us know in the comment. If you've tried it and it worked, let us know in the comment. Uh, if you think there's anything that could be improved, let us know in the comment. I hope you experiment with it, and most of all, have fun with it. Stay safe, and hopefully this will come in handy one day. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I'll have more contents like this coming out real soon.